Now where do I go? Back to the baggage compartment, I guess. It's the center of the train and it's where the movers and shakers hang out. It's also where they sell the coffee and Joanne, the train's hostess, makes her announcements. Oh, we try to keep a tight schedule. What's your name? My name is Joanne. And you're sort of a lot. Uh, you tell us. Car host. Car host, yeah, you're the one that tells the stories about the train. That's right. All right, you ride this every day? Uh, every Friday and Saturday and throughout the week if we have special charters, I do all of the charter trips also. Okay. Um, most of them will go all the way to two harbors. Some will order box lunches and I serve them on the trip also. One of the special places on the train is the area between the cars. It's a romantic getaway for couples to enjoy the adventure of the train. Unless, of course, a photographer stumbles upon you. Oh look, I think they're getting embarrassed. Well, we'll just give them the cutest couple award and leave it at that. Time to move on. I'm walking through one of the older passenger cars now. This one, I believe, is from the 40s or 50s. As I said earlier, if you can't get to the engine, what you're looking at now is the back of the coal car. Only way from here is back. Look, there's the Knife River. Knife River, and the river looks like it's dirty or muddy, but the red coloring in the water is from iron ore wash off from There's an island outside the mouth of the river here called the Knife Island, and that's a bird sanctuary. Don't look now, but I think someone's behind me. I can almost feel them breathing down my back. I'll try and give him the slip. Here he comes. How's the train ride? Great. Really? You ever ridden many, many trains? First one? And it's an old steam train to boot. Where'd you come from? Iowa. I Iowa. Iowa. Wow. Too bad that lady is talking. All right. This were the 1930s. That mysterious lady with the hooded jacket could be Greta Garbo. Hi there! She wants to be alone. The train is slowing down now as we make our approach into the scenic two harbor. Oh look, there's another romantic couple. If you notice, the train is actually backing into two harbors. I guess that's not unusual because of the way the tracks are set up. You can't turn a train on a dime, you know. Meanwhile, the passengers are anxious to get off the train and see the sights. We'll be in two harbors for two hours. Passengers can do what they like, but Joanne, our hostess, warns them, don't be late. The bus travels around town about every half hour, so if you'd like to go from one area to another, just watch for the bus and wave your arms around and he'll stop and pick you up again. Now please be back to the train 
by at least 2 o'clock to 2.15 for boarding. We have to leave two harbors at 2.30. The passengers were off to see the sights. Most of them were on tours and their buses had driven from Duluth to show them the town and get them back on time. Remember, don't be late. Meanwhile, I took the time to check out the locomotive. I had never been inside one, only seen one in the movies. Inside the cab, you can tell the locomotive is nothing more than one big boiler on wheels. They showed me her fire. The engineer is Frank Christopherson. You've been an engineer how long? Many, many years. I worked 53 years on the Burlington Northern. Yeah. Well, give me a rundown on this. Uh, this is not like an airplane now. Uh, no, it's not like an airplane. It's uh, uh, quite an interesting machine, however. It, it Bridner feels a little bit like it's alive with the mirror pumps pumping and uh, the steam and the fire. It's an interesting piece of machinery. Yeah, where's the gas pedal? Uh, right up there, that long bar. Oh, go show me how that works, will ya? I, I can't pull it right now, we don't want to move. But that does it, huh? That's what lets the steam into the cylinders. Uh-huh. This is the train brake, engine brake, and that's the reverser. Where's the reverser? Right here. You pull her back and that backs her up. Right, push it ahead and it goes ahead. So what is it, just a big old boiler up there, right? It certainly is, yes. Carries 200 pounds of steam. And it, uh, it has a stoker, but right now the stoker isn't working, so we have a couple of firemen to fire it by hand. Oh, I see. Well, you're doing some repairs now. Uh, yes, we had a little leak up there. Uh, Tom is fixing that. So how old is this, this train? Uh, built in 1923. Uh-huh. So it's, uh, what, 75 years old? Uh, 80, 80 some years old. Yeah. Wow. But uh, we've done a lot of work on it recently, and it's in, in pretty good shape for its age. Yeah. I got a chance to sit in the left seat and imagine what it must have been like to have been Casey Jones rolling down the tracks on that fateful day. When I was a kid, my parents bought me a train, but this one's way too big to fit under a tree. It's getting near 2.30. Passengers have started arriving for the trip back to Duluth. They can visit the gift shop in the historic old Two Harbors train depot or visit with the engineers and get a good look at the train. This bashful lady remembers it when it was retired and on display. No, no, no. Well, tell me about the train. <laughs> I don't know about the train. Well, you guys came up from Mondovi, Wisconsin. Because the train was originally in Eau Claire. Oh, a little bit of local history here. <laughs> what do you think of the train so far? Oh, a very enjoyable ride. Yeah? Very nice, yes. All aboard! Time to go. I've been keeping an eye out for that guy who's been following me, but so far, I haven't seen him. Well, that's the last of the passengers. Time to fire it up and blow this pop stand. We've got a deadline to meet. Oh, look out. We've got 26 miles and the deadline to meet. Say it again, say it again. 26 miles and a deadline to me. Coming around the curve here. Mm -hmm.